Since the first case of a novel coronavirus was announced in Wuhan, China, on the 31st of December 2019, the disease, now called COVID-19, has spread rapidly around the world. Many countries have implemented shutdowns of industry and limited social movement as health experts race to find out more about this highly contagious disease. This video course uses the latest medical research to provide vital training to all industries, to learn how the disease spreads, understand what true social distancing is and why it's important, learn to prevent and manage outbreaks in your workplace, help your staff adjust to the new normal, and to develop collective responsibility for managing pandemic diseases. South Africa recorded its first case of COVID-19 on the 5th of March 2020. By the time a national lockdown had been declared on the 27th of March, this number had already grown to 1,170. Despite the social distancing this lockdown enforced, infections continued to spread, reaching 150,000 by the end of June. In light of these ever-increasing numbers and with so much still unknown about the disease, the most important question is, how do we curb the spread of COVID-19 and prevent future outbreaks? One remarkable case study of an outbreak in a Durban hospital provides life-saving insight. Just in, the first case of coronavirus in South Africa has been confirmed. We must emphasize that a second case was both likely and expected. Well, the COVID-19 outbreak isn't showing any signs of easing down. The number of coronavirus cases now sits at 65,736. There has now been a huge jump in the number of people who have died of COVID-19. CRISP's team of researchers, scientists and doctors at the University of KwaZulu-Natal in South Africa are bringing new findings to light about a clustered outbreak that occurred in a local hospital. By reviewing medical records, ward visits and interviews, they were able to track the spread of the novel coronavirus in close-up detail, discovering just how this disease has been able to spread so quickly in the hospital environment and what we can learn from this sector. The story they uncovered reveals important new information about the nature of COVID-19 and exposes areas of risk that society may be overlooking. Unlike other outbreaks, where hospitals and public services were quickly overwhelmed, this case occurred early in South Africa's epidemic and can be traced back to a single infected person, allowing researchers to track the disease more easily. What happened in the hospital is, is in some ways unique to the hospital environment, but in other ways it shows us, as I say, that, that this virus will spread where people are close together. On the 9th of March, four days after the first confirmed cases in the country, an undiagnosed individual showing symptoms of coronavirus visits the emergency room of a Durban hospital. While in the ER waiting room, this patient crosses paths with another person seeking medical care, unknowingly transmitting the virus to them. The initial patient is sent home after being treated, while the second patient is admitted for unrelated health issues. By the time this patient goes home a few days later, still with no symptoms other than a fever, four more patients in the same medical ward are infected, as well as the nurse directly responsible for these patients' care. A week later, the previously discharged patient returns to the hospital, only now showing full symptoms. On the same day, one of the newly infected patients is transferred to a separate ward where he infects the nurse on duty. Once again, the disease spreads quickly through this ward, with pre-symptomatic infections identified as one of the main causes. As the virus takes its toll, a patient is moved to the ICU, now showing symptoms and infecting more people in this part of the hospital. Some of the patients from ICU are sent to an external facility for treatment, where 19 more people become infected by April. Meanwhile, the nurse who was infected earlier in the outbreak returns to work once feeling better, but comes into contact with another two infected patients. This marks the second wave of infections as the spread grows rapidly, ultimately infecting 80 staff and 39 patients. Less than four weeks after the very first patient's ill-fated visit to the ER, the hospital is temporarily closed in an urgent attempt to control the outbreak. So, what does this story teach us about COVID-19? 
While information on social distancing and the use of personal protective equipment is now widely known, the experiences of both the patients and healthcare workers at the hospital reveal some new insights. Number one, the virus is transmissible before symptoms appear. In many cases, other patients became infected by someone not yet showing symptoms. Therefore, within hospitals, it is better to treat every patient with caution, as if they are already infected, and act accordingly. Number two, hand hygiene remains one of the most important interventions to prevent the spread of the virus. Frequent washing of hands with soap and water must be encouraged among all patients and staff. Number three, the pattern of spread within the hospital suggests fomite transmission may play a significant role. This is the spread of the virus through shared objects, on clothing or on furniture, making it harder to track. While many are on guard against contact transmission, which occurs from one infected person directly to another, there is less training and awareness about transmission through commonly used services or objects. Number four, environmental hygiene is therefore critical. Evidence suggests that the virus can survive for hours or even days on different surfaces. So it's very likely that the environment around a patient infected with COVID-19 will be contaminated. This emphasizes the need for regular cleaning and disinfection, especially high contact surfaces, such as stethoscopes, bed rails, light switches, and all patient care items. When we think about infection prevention and control, there's lots of prongs to infection prevention and control. And the, the first thing and, and the key thing that would have really prevented this outbreak is physically separating people who have respiratory symptoms, so people who might have COVID, um, from people who are in hospital for completely separate reasons. Number five, training is essential on the new type and level of cleaning and social distancing required. The rapid spread of this virus through a hospital, which had implemented safety measures and personal protective equipment, shows just how much more caution is needed if clustered outbreaks are to be avoided. Although this clustered outbreak happened in a hospital, it teaches us important lessons about the spread of COVID-19 that can be applied to other fields. As all sectors begin to open, schools return and restrictions are relaxed, it is vital we learn from the hospital outbreak that this virus spreads very easily, even when some personal protective equipment and social distancing is in place. This video forms episode one of an educational series that is both relevant and necessary for training in hospitals, prisons, schools, factories, restaurants, government departments and other at-risk industries. The aim of this educational series is to create greater understanding about the virus and to enable more consistent and collective effort in our fight against the pandemic. While training and proper application of risk prevention methods won't reduce the risk of infection to zero, it can go a long way to minimizing risk and controlling the spread of COVID-19 and other viruses in the future.